Hi, this is going to be a tips and trick under five minutes. And yes, I'm actually timing it. So we're going to talk briefly about flux. When you solder, flux sometimes is important. Most modern solder like this has flux inside of it. This is a called a multi-core. There's little tiny cores of flux inside the solder. And when you solder, it does this. See if you can see the smoke. Like that. Contrary to what people think, the smoke is not the tin and lead solder vaporizing that you're breathing in. It's actually the rosin flux that's inside the solder. The vaporization temperature of the solder is much higher than it is for the flux. So there are basically two kinds of flux that sometimes you need to add when you're soldering. There's standard rosin flux. This is a little tiny bottle of Kester 186, which is sort of the go-to rosin flux in the world. There's lots of different kinds. There's probably hundreds of different kinds of flux. This is a very common type. It's in a liquid in a little application bottle here. The problem with this in some applications, and I'm gonna put a little dab here on the board, just make a little pull of it, is when you heat it up, it's just like when we melted the solder. It gets hot, it smokes, it vaporizes, and it basically burns away and you've got nothing left. That doesn't always work out the way you want it to when you're soldering something that requires more heat or longer heat application time. So there are other kinds of flux and this is the other type that I keep here in the shop. This is made by a company called Amtec and this is Amtec NC559-V2-TF and this is primarily designed and meant to be used with small surface mount components where you place the component on the board and then you use a hot air gun to melt the solder and it solders itself to the board. This kind of flux has to last longer on the board because it's exposed to the heat for a longer period of time. So I'll put a little blob of it there on the board and we're not going to use a heat gun because this is not a surface mount board and that's not the application and that's not what most do-it-yourselfers would be doing. Maybe some but not that much. So when you apply heat to this you will get a little bit of smoke but Basically what happens is it liquefies and you end up with a pool. I don't know how well you can see that right below the tip of my finger. There's a pool of melted flux on the board and it takes a lot of heat for a long period of time to actually sort of bake this away. It's still a pool. It's still smoking. It's still runny. And eventually if you heat it long enough, you will burn it all away, but it takes a long time. That's a much better type of flux to use in many applications because if you're soldering larger or heavier components or sometimes a series of components in a row and you've got to go solder, 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 you don't want it all to burn away instantly like this does. You need something that lasts longer. Of course, when you're done soldering, good practice is you need to clean it up a little bit. And what you're going to clean it up with is your standard isopropyl rubbing alcohol pad that you can buy at your local drugstore. And you just take that and you very carefully wipe around. And you can remove it. This one there wasn't very much. It's hard to see on the rubbing pad here, but it's kind of yellowed where it picked up the flux and you clean it off. You don't want to leave flux on the board because it will slowly eat away at the solder joints over time and that can create problems. So that's your tip and trick for today. Right type of product for the right application makes all the difference, oops, upside down, makes all the difference in what you're doing.